Elon Musk has called AI one of the biggest threats to humanity. Sam Altman, the CEO of ChatGPT's parent company, OpenAI, says we've got to be careful here. Bill Gates says I'm very concerned about superintelligence. All this discussion about the alarming state of AI, yet if you're like me, you're left wondering why everyone is so scared. Sure, AI can make some pretty pictures, it can write some essays, but it still feels very mediocre. Someone who's passionate about writing can easily tell when something is written by AI. It's just not there yet. So I'm left wondering, what am I missing? What would the next step look like? The step that apparently bridges the gap between basic image and writing tools to world altering super intelligence. I've done my investigation, sought out the opinions of tech leads at Fortune 100 companies and the research of people at world renowned universities. And I finally understand why people are terrified. Watch all the way through and you will too. Jeffrey Hinton, known as the godfather of artificial intelligence, says he stepped down so he can freely discuss the dangers of AI. What happens when something vastly smarter than the smartest person comes along in Silicon Valley? Let's talk about the terrifying next step for AI. Welcome to Here's the Catch, the first episode of a series I'm creating in which I explain something but with my own creative spin to things, a catch if you will. In this episode, as I mentioned, we're deep diving on the next step for AI, but here's the catch. I'm doing so without using traditional editing techniques. Instead, I'm challenging myself to only use AI tooling to keep you engaged, starting now. Take a look at this graph behind me. Now I've made this graph out of generative AI, so it might be a little hard to see, but I think you get the point. This graph is the rate at which technology has accelerated within the past 600 years. Let's say we go back in time, 200 years. We grab some random guy, let's name him Thomas. We take Thomas to the top of that curve, our present, 200 years later. It's impossible for us to even imagine what he might feel terrifyingly massive structures reaching into the sky, shiny metallic pods zooming by on a massive road. We've got a magic rectangle that lights up and responds to your touch. And don't even get me started on things like the internet, the space station, generative AI, or nuclear power. Now let Thomas do the same thing. Go back another 200 years from the 1800s to the 1600s, grab some random dude and bring him to Thomas's present somewhere in the 1800s. That dude isn't going to be nearly as impressed as Thomas was, but he might have expected him to. Okay, okay, you get it. The rate of change is sped up. What's the point? Well, there's a few things. This graph will come up several times throughout this video. It's a very important part in explaining the progression of AI. But what I want to use it for right now is to remind you that progression happens in this ever accelerating curve, yet we as humans think in straight lines. This is exactly what's happening when I ask, how are people so worried about AI? I'm assuming that AI will progress at the rate that I've personally seen. But let's take a step back. To even get to this next phase of AI to reach this terrifying point of advancement, we need to rely on the same graph or another thing the growth of computational power. And this is one of the reasons why we're seeing so many warnings from big names like Musk and Gates about AI, because we're getting really close to a scary yet exciting moment in computational history. We're getting really close to sticking our brains into a computer at an affordable cost. Stick with me here. For Terminator, iRobot, whatever sci-fi movie you want to reference, for any of those to happen, we need a computer that can carry out the same amount of calculations per second as our human brain. Now we've done this, but with supercomputers. Imagine if we could do it for a thousand dollars. Then everyone involved in AI research could work towards just advancing the technology and the hardware side would already be covered. Want to know something crazy? We're only a few years away from this being a reality. Before 2030, we're expected to get an affordable computer that rivals the power of the human brain. Now we've got the hardware side covered. What else is there? Simply put, the only thing left is the progression of AI. But what does that look like? Well, this. These are the three divisions. I'll spare you the fancy tech vocabulary and break it up into specific, general, and super. Specific is where we're at, as in each AI is specific to a particular use case. We've been at the state for a while now. Chess AI that's really good at beating you. Email spam filters that are really good at filtering emails. And Midjourney that's really good at generating images. The next step would be something more general, something that can handle general human actions, something that self-learns, has a full range of cognitive abilities, and it uses previous learned things in new areas begins to bridge the gap between the sort of narrow knowledge we've seen for years and the capability of the average human being. It's, it's basically a human at this point. And then finally, there's super intelligence, something that exceeds that of humans in every way. 
creativity, wisdom, social skills. Now one might ask, how do we get from the specific section that we're currently in to the general? This actually addresses the topic of this video as well. What is that next terrifying step? Well, let's just ask Mustafa Suleiman, the co-founder of Google's AI division, DeepMind. Suleiman claims that the boom of AI we have seen in these past few years is just a phase. The next immediate step is interactive AI. That's AI that is able to carry out more general tasks. It will be able to receive more general inputs and then understand how to interact with separate parties to get the job done, aka other humans or even other technology, other AI. From there, it will learn from its previous mistakes and apply it to a wide range of tasks. Does this sound familiar? Sounds to me like a clear progression towards the next step of general AI intelligence. Now, this is where things really begin to get scary. I'm gonna pause here and tell you that everything from here on out is going to sound like science fiction, but it's real research science from respected thinkers and scientists within this field. As we make this next step into generalized AI, we begin to teach the model to be better at a wide range of tasks. Eventually, one of those tasks become make yourself smarter. And when you let AI improve itself, you unleash that exponential curve. But this time, instead of Thomas from the 1800s being left dumbstruck, it's all of us mere humans. Let me explain it like this. Imagine it takes decades for the first AI system to reach general intelligence, but it finally happens. A computer is able to understand the world around it as well as a human four-year-old. Suddenly, within an hour of hitting that milestone, the system pumps out the grand theory of physics that unifies general relativity and quantum mechanics something no human has been able to do ever. 90 minutes after that, the AI has become 170,000 times more intelligent than a human. Super intelligence of that magnitude is not something that we can even begin to understand. For us, an IQ of 130 is smart and one of 85 is dumb, but we don't have a word for an IQ of 13,000. When we reach super intelligence, there's no saying what will happen. When you have a being that is better than humans in every form, your existence is simply up to the mercy of that being. 